Hello students, welcome to today's class. In the previous video, I had spoken to you about nitrogen fixation, especially biological nitrogen fixation, which is a process wherein nitrogen gas from the atmosphere is converted into a usable form such as ammonia with the help of microorganisms. And under this, we had studied about the different types such as free living nitrogen fixation, symbiotic and associative symbiotic. I have told you about the nitrogenase enzyme which comprises of two components dinitrogenase and dinitrogenase reductase or also called as nitrogenase and nitrogenase reductase. These two components that is the Fe protein and the MOFE protein together form the nitrogenase enzyme complex. So the MOFE protein is a tetramer and the Fe protein is a dimer together which forms the functional nitrogenase complex. This is coded by the NIF gene cluster. So the NIF gene is comprising of 20 genes and I had told you the importance or significance of every one of these genes which are involved in not only the synthesis of the nitrogenase enzyme but also its regulation. So we have positive regulators and negative regulators that will determine when and how much of the NIF gene is going to be synthesized. I had also told you about the NOT gene cluster which is found only in a few organisms that show the process of nodulation. This NOT gene cluster is found in species such as Rhizobium or in Frankia where this gene cluster results in formation of nodules on the plant roots. We had also spoken about the biochemistry of nitrogen fixation when there is a series of reactions by which Nitrogen gets converted into ammonia with the help of electron carriers such as ferrodoxin or flavodoxin. In today's video, let us study in detail about the different types of non-symbiotic nitrogen fixing organisms and the symbiotic nitrogen fixing organisms. Under the non-symbiotic nitrogen fixers, we have several free living bacteria, fungi and blue green algae which are capable of fixing nitrogen without being in association with a particular plant. That is, they are capable of fixing nitrogen in a free living form. That is why it is called as non-symbiotic nitrogen fixation. These nitrogen fixers or any organism that fixes nitrogen is also called as diazotroph because it is able to fix the nitrogen that is present in the atmosphere. This includes bacteria such as Azotobacter, Bigerinchia, Anaerobic bacteria such as Clostridium, D. sulfovibrio, Rhodopseudomonas, Rhodospirulum, Chromatium, etc. And even a few blue green algae such as Anabina, Nostoc, Olocera, etc. In today's video, we will be studying in detail about two such non symbiotic nitrogen fixers that is Azotobacter and Azospirulum. Azotobacter is a gram negative capsulated bacteria as you can see over here it is capsulated that is the reason it forms mucoid colonies when grown on agar so it is a gram negative capsulated bacteria that is having an oval or spherical shape and has a size ranging from 2 to 4 micrometers in diameter the organism is motile and can form cysts. It forms thick walled cysts which act as the resting state of this organism. This organism is found in freshwater or brackish marshes and also in neutral to mildly alkaline soils. The organism Azotobacter is aerobic and it is free living. That is why it is studied as a classical example of non-symbiotic nitrogen fixer. This organism is the, its number or its abundance is related to the organic matter in the soil, the pH, temperature and the depth of soil. Along with nitrogen fixation, azotobacter is also known to produce important growth factors such as thymine, riboflavin, nicotine, indole acetic acid or that is auxins and gibberlins which improves the yield of the plants. That is why this, is, this organism is also used as a biofertilizer. Azotobacter contains NIF genes and HUP genes. Now NIF genes are important for nitrogenase or nitrogen fixation and HUP genes if you remember from the previous video are important to increase the efficiency of nitrogen fixation because HUP genes produce 
hydrogenase enzyme which helps in conserving the hydrogen that is that can be lost as a result of nitrogen fixation this organism can be isolated on the ash bees medium which is shown over here and the organism protects its nitrogenase enzyme from oxygen as i have told you already nitrogenase is an enzyme that can be easily affected by oxygen or it is highly sensitive to oxygen so azotobacter protects its nitrogenase from oxygen exposure or it gives limited ox oxygen exposure because azotobacter shows very high respiration rates due to which the nitrogenase enzyme has limited exposure to oxygen also because there is hydrogenase present the hydrogenase enzyme which is coded by the hup genes will immediately convert the hydrogen in association with oxygen into water so in both these ways the organism is able to protect its nitrogenase enzyme from oxygen some of the important species of azotobacter are azotobacter crucocum azotobacter paspali azotobacter winelandii azotobacter bigerinki azotobacter tropicalis and azotobacter salinestris these are some of the important species which have been used in the production of biofertilizers so when you are writing about or when you are studying about any one nitrogen fixing organism you need to focus more on its characteristics what how it improves the growth of the plant what are the different genes it possesses and some of its important species the next organism that we will be studying about under non symbiotic nitrogen fixation is azospirillum now azospirillum is not completely non symbiotic it forms associative symbiosis with certain grasses and cereals or cereal crops now associative symbiosis means it is predominantly present on the surface or it colonizes the surface of that particular plant like the grass or cereal it does not penetrate deeper into the tissue and remains on the surface that is why it is called as associative symbiosis in few species it can be also present as an endophyte that is that is it penetrates slightly into the tissue of the plant but in most of the species it is present only on the surface this organism is also gram negative and it is a micro aerophile or it is a micro aerophilic rod shaped organism the rods are slightly curved and have a length of 2 to 3.8 micrometers with a diameter of 1 micrometer the organism also contains phb granules and like i told you is found in the rhizosphere of several grasses and cereal crops this organism also has or shows the presence of nif genes which are involved in nitrogen fixation and hup genes which are involved in the production of hydrogenase enzyme for efficient or better nitrogen fixation the organism can be isolated on azospirillum medium or it can be isolated on a malate medium which has been supplemented with some minerals azospirillum is an organism that protects its nitrogenase by again two mechanisms one is it contains the hup genes which will help in sequestering or which will help in removing the oxygen and combining it with hydrogen to produce water that is one method it can reduce the concentration of oxygen the other method is then our there is covalent modification of the nitrogenase enzyme which has been seen in certain species which makes it more tolerant to oxygen and the third way it protects the nitrogenase from oxygen is because the organism is a micro aerophile so it requires less percentage of oxygen due to which nitrogenase does not come in contact with oxygen as often and is protected from its effects some of the important species of azospirillum are azospirillum lipoferum azospirillum brasilens amazonens azospirillum haloprifferens and azospirillum iracans these are some of the important species and like azotobacter this organism also produces biologically active substances or growth factors in addition to nitrogen fixation so that is how it is able to improve the productivity or yield of a particular plant now coming to symbiotic nitrogen fixation like i told you in the previous video symbiotic nitrogen fixation is where the plant and nitrogen fixer have a close and mutually beneficial relationship under symbiotic nitrogen fixation 
we will be studying in detail about Frankia which is an actinomycete and rhizobium. So the first symbiotic nitrogen fixer that we will be studying about in detail is Frankia. Now this is an organism that has been named in honor of the German biologist A.B. Frank. It is an actinomycete. Now actinomycetes are bacteria which have morphological characteristics that are similar to that of fungi. So Frankia is a gram positive bacteria or a gram positive actinomycetes. Actinomycete, which is found in association with the roots of actinorhizal plants such as Alnus, Casuarina, Myrica, Discaria, etc. There are several actinorhizal plants, basically angiosperms, which have the association of Frankia in their roots. Now, this organism also forms root nodules, which are similar to that of rhizobium. The exact mechanism of root nodule formation and what exactly it is, we will be studying when we talk about rhizobium. But Frankia also shows the presence of root nodules on the roots and root hair of these angiosperms. The organism shows the presence of NIF genes which are involved in nitrogen fixation, NOD genes which are involved in nodulation and HUP genes which are involved in the production of hydrogenase to scavenge the oxygen. So this organism protects its nitrogenase one by the presence of HUP genes which produce hydrogenase that scavenges the oxygen and provides less oxygen in the presence in the vicinity of nitrogenase enzyme. The second method by which or the second mechanism by which Frankia protects its nitrogenase enzyme is by using a hemoglobin that will scavenge the oxygen or that will take up all the oxygen and avoid oxygen coming in contact with nitrogenase enzyme. So the two mechanisms by which Frankia protects its nitrogenase enzyme is one. It is having HUP genes which provide which produce hydrogenase enzyme that uses up the oxygen to form water and secondly it has hemoglobin which scavenges the oxygen and avoid it, avoids it coming in contact with the nitrogenase enzyme. Though it does not have leg hemoglobin the nodule does show a red pigmentation due to presence of anthocyanin. Now coming to the mechanism of infection. So this organism can enter the Frankia, the Frankia can enter the plants or angiosperms through their root hair. So there are spores of Frankia present in the soil. Now like I told you it has characteristics similar to that of fungi. So it produces spores. These spores of Frankia get embedded in a mucilaginous layer around the root region of a plant, of the host plant. From there, they get attached to the root hair and penetrate inside the root. Once they penetrate inside the root, they trigger rapid cell division which results in the formation of a nodule. Now, the nodule formation of a frankia and angiosperm takes around roughly 10 to 14 days from the day of infection. So within 10 to 14 days, there can be nodules which are seen attached to the roots. You can see over here, this is the root of the angiosperm and this, these are the several nodules which can be seen attached to it. You can see over here the filaments that are present in the frankia, which is an actinomycete. The second symbiotic nitrogen fixer, which is very, very important and which is very widely studied by all soil microbiologists is that of rhizobium. So rhizobium is a gram negative non sporulating motile rod shaped bacterium which is found in soil and is capable of nodulation and symbiosis with certain plants specifically leguminous plants. Now the rhizobium shows host specificity which means depending on the flavonoids that are released by a particular plant root the species of rhizobium that attacks it or that forms an association with it will differ. So there are different species that are involved such as rhizobium leguminosarum will, for, will cause nodule formation in pea plants or rhizobium phaseoli will cause nodule formation in beans plants or japonicum which will cause the nodule formation in soya bean plants etc. So every rhizobium species will form the nodule in its respective host plant because of the specific flavonoids that are released by that particular plant's roots. That is why Rhizobium is known to show extreme host specificity. 
Now, this organism can be isolated and grown on EMA medium, which stands for yeast extract mannitol agar. This is the medium which is used to grow or isolate rhizobium from the soil or from the nodules. Some of the important species of rhizobium are rhizobium meriloti, rhizobium trifoli, rhizobium leguminosarum, which I told you is causing infection in the pea plants or causes nodulation in the pea plants. Rhizobium phaseoli, japonicum and rhizobium lupini. These are some of the important species of rhizobium. Now they are always associated with the leguminous plants and they contain the NIF genes, NOD genes and HUP genes. But these genes are usually present on a large plasmid that is called as the SIM plasmid. SIM is standing for the symbiotic plasmid. So these genes are mostly present on the SIM plasmid, though in some species they are also present on the chromosome, but they are usually present on a large, large plasmid that is called as the SIM plasmid. And in case of rhizobium, there is also another unique characteristic that is presence of leg hemoglobin. Now, leg hemoglobin is a type of hemoglobin that is found only in this kind of leguminous plant and rhizobium interaction. This is also involved in scavenging of oxygen. The exact mechanism will be studied in detail later. So, leg hemoglobin is a molecule that can be formed only when there is an association with the rhizobium and leguminous plant. Hence, it is called as leg hemoglobin. Leg stands here for leguminous plant. So, you can see over here, these are the root nodules which are formed by rhizobium on the roots of the leguminous plant. And this is a single cell a single plant cell which is filled with the rhizobium. The rhizobium is usually present in the form of bacteroids. We will be discussing about it later. In the next class, we shall study the exact mechanism of symbiosis, how it is being established in the leguminous plants. I hope you all have understood today's class. Thank you.